Before we throw over to Dwayne Go, I do have a donation from Taskbot. Taskbot donated $314.15. Think about it for a second. And Taskbot says, Taskbot here, Dwango AC would like to thank Malio for leading efforts on Mario Kart Wii and Uni for leading efforts on Celeste. Come join us at discord.task.bot to help me pick what to play at HDQ 2020. So thank you very much, everybody helped donate. And with that, we're going to toss it back over to Taskbot with Mario Kart Wii. Come on, give us some cheering. <laughs> wild out there. All right, we are ready to go. This is going to be a lot of fun. I've got to tell you, while I've been watching how things have developed over time, it's been really fun seeing the improvements. We submitted this at, at submissions. We had everything ready at submissions. But man, since that time, we have seen some really amazing improvements. I'm going to take it over to Malio, if I pronounce that correctly for once. Yeah, yeah. Malio is going to introduce the rest of the crew. But before he does, I want to, con I want to talk about the console we're using. This is a completely unmodified console. It's a completely unmodified copy of the disc. The only thing we've done is made some cosmetic changes because normally in this game you wouldn't have any sound while watching a ghost. We've also added another cosmetic change to add in a speedometer. I think that's the majority of the changes. Yeah. There's also some things that we did to help us quickly get to the next file. You'll notice there's a rather peculiar looking me. <laughs> um, you'll be seeing him a couple of times. I'm going to turn it over to Malio, and I got to tell you, you guys are in for one heck of a treat. I am not worthy to provide commentary for this <laughs> because it's just too crazy. So he'll be leading that up and has done a fantastic job of organizing the team. Thank you so much. I'm going to hand it over yeah. to you. All right, sounds good. Thank you for the introduction, Duango. So my name is Malio. I'm joined by... Hi, I'm Luke. I'm Derek, or Taz Plasma. Bye -bye. We got Funky Kong over here. <laughs> um, Yeah, so together, um, ourselves and our community of uh, 20 authors put together a showcase of 11 tracks that we'll be showing off today. Um, so I think with that, um, is everybody ready to get started? Yeah? Yay! Yeah. All right, three, two, one, go. All right, so this first track is Luigi's Circuit. Um, right off the bat, you'll notice that we're using Funky Kong and the Spear. So out of all characters, Funky Kong has the fastest speed stat, and Spear's the fastest vehicle in the track. Uh, game. Yeah. This track was made by, uh, er, this, this task was made by myself, Monster, Rocky, and Thomas. Um, I believe this was made in February. Um, so we'll take these first two turns real quick. Leading up to this ramp, you're going to see that we're going to use a series of rapid fire hops to reduce our air time on this ramp. And if you rapid fire hop leading into this uh, curve right here, we can actually get ourselves stuck in the floor and we can lose traction and build up speed as we make our way down the floor. Uh, it's, it's the same speed as if you were using a mushroom constantly. And we can uh, stop hopping, get ejected out of the floor, and do a couple uh, frame-perfect jumps to conserve some of that momentum. Yeah, so the reason this actually works is that very briefly after our hop, there's a, a, about a two-frame window in which the tilt of your bike is locked into place. So if you hop again during those two frames, um, you can keep doing hops over and over and over again. You kind of lose traction with the ground, um, and you start sliding. And uh, we can use that to just build up an insane amount of speed over time. And you'll notice we don't do, that's what we call the super grind there. Uh, we don't do that on lap three because the only reason it saves time in the first place is because we can bring that increased speed into the following lap. But since this is the last lap, uh, it's not worth it to go out of our way to set it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's also worth pointing out, um, it did say you lose there. For some reason, Nintendo, when they program this game, um, if you tie a ghost, uh, that's what we're doing, we're racing a ghost technically. When you tie a ghost, it just says you lose. Uh, I don't know why. So. so coming up next, we have uh, Bowser's Castle by Zach. Um, and you might have heard Mally say the Lord Low Jump, which what that's referring to is anytime you leave a triggerable service with the aim to get the least amount of air time possible. So you're going to see one right here on this first ramp. We're going to clip the side of this wall and, put, and uh, propel ourselves forward. As well as on this wavy kind of area here, we're going to optimize it around um, getting the least amount of air time possible. As well as come of these stairs, you're going to see we're going to try and stick to them. Uh, and the reason this is because airtime in this game is, is slow. Um, anytime you're in the air, your vehicle is constantly decelerating. So um, in order to go fast, we want to um, get as, as little airtime as possible. Um, as well as right there, you might have noticed that Nintendo, Nintendo has a nasty habit of forgetting to add collision to some walls. So we can just kind of use the side of the half pipe there to get up to the higher level, which saves about three seconds. 
It's one of those geysers right there. You kind of see, um, we don't necessarily go for the most amount of tricks possible. Um, you're gonna see it again on this wavy road. Instead, we kind of, we evenly spread out the boosts so that we kind of, ma we maximize the amount of boost time we have instead of going for like a million tricks possible. Well, yeah, so even though we said Spear was the fastest vehicle in the game, we're using Flame Runner on this course because Spear has some pretty poor drifting skills, whereas the Flame Runner takes turns very tightly. And those turns you saw up uh, before are pretty tight, so. So one thing you've probably noticed by this point is that anytime we're moving in a straight line, we always want to try being in a wheelie. Um, that's the fastest method of moving. Um, anytime we try to turn, uh, we use the manual transmission and we charge up a mini turbo. So mini turbos in themselves aren't that great. They do give you a temporary speed up, um, but ultimately they're really beneficial because they allow you to return to your maximum wheelie speed pretty much instantly after you uh, release the mini turbo. Yeah, wheelies, they're a little bit broken in this game. Anytime you're in a wheelie, your, your maximum speed is increased by about 12%. So that's actually one of the reasons that we're not going to use any carts. We only use bikes on any of these runs just because of that reason. Um, and also just on an emotional level, I kind of hate carts. They're kind of a garbage vehicle. Um, Jeez, you might have noticed that uh, we have three shrimps left and it's lap three. So we mentioned we mentioned the uh, rapid fire hop ejection on a Luigi circuit. It's the exact same principle. If you release your rapid fire hop right at the end of that ramp, it's gonna kind of boost you out of the ground. You get insane airtime, and you can use that to skip the turn. Okay, so this upcoming track is Toad's Factory. It was made by Blaze, Malio, Luke, and myself. It features a newly found glitch that was found by Blaze and recently revised by Benny. At the start, we're gonna do some wheelies and move forward. We're actually sliding forward before the race even starts, which saves time. And then up here, there's a conveyor, which speeds you up. If we hop on the conveyor, it actually maintains some of that speed. Right, so up here is the new, the new glitch. We're gonna clip off this box. You'll see Spear is taking some of these turns pretty awkwardly, but it's due to it's just poor drift drift mechanic. However, we were able to catch that really fast box cycle on lap one. So we think Spear is the fastest vehicle on this level. Yeah, so this, again, we mentioned this is a very new glitch that was found very recently. And the reason we actually, that's kind of the reason we want to show off this course is because it is new. Um, a lot of these courses that you're going to see are the result of years of optimization and uh, strategy um, discussion and trying to figure out different things. Um, so we thought it was important to show that, you know, a lot of these strats you don't find first try. It takes a long time to develop these methods. So um, this is what maybe an early revision of what an optimized course would look like. Um, and this course has some interesting challenges because um, the box clip is cycle-based. It's the first cycle-based course um, in the entire game that requires a certain cycle to progress. So um, there's some interesting challenges that come with um, optimizing this course in particular. And one thing to point out too is after we land here, um, you noticed on lap one we had a stick on the inside and that was ultimately because we had to just barely catch the first cycle so our angle after we land um, isn't as far to the right as we'd like. Um, but luckily on lap three the uh, conveyor belt switches directions so we can just take the inside line. And here we can use rapid fire hops to reduce our airtime. and there's Toad's Factory. <laughs> All right, so the uh, next segment of this we're going to move on to is a ultra shortcut segment. And uh, there's a continuing theme of ultra shortcuts in this game. Um, this task was made by Akari, RS, Snoop, Jellopuff, Luke, uh, myself, and Thomas. Um, so right off the bat here, we can draw some parallels to Toad's Factory. We can use a series of wall clips here to get this ultra shortcut. <laughs> yeah! Woo! So essentially what we did by doing that, uh, that first wall clip, we kept the last checkpoint of the map loaded at all times. So at an, any given time, um, there, the checkpoint that you're in, the checkpoint in front of you, and the checkpoint behind you is always loaded. So effectively what we did is uh, we avoided going into the second checkpoint. That means that the last checkpoint of the lap is still there, meaning that we can just get behind the finish line, trigger the uh, last checkpoint, and the lap will count. Uh, one thing to note, though, you'll see in Maple Treeway, we don't necessarily need to get behind the finish line. We just need to avoid getting into the second checkpoint and just reach the last checkpoint of the map. <laughs> so
So the next ultra shortcut we're going to show off is uh, DK Jungle Parkway by Malio, Blaze, and Thomas. Um, and it's going to use a wall clip as well in order to achieve an ultra shortcut. Um, it's also going to use an interesting glitch called the horizontal wall glitch. Um, and you might ask what a horizontal wall is. Um, most walls in the game are placed vertically, hence the name wall. And uh, However, Nintendo placed um, the wall collision in some areas uh, horizontally. So the top of this finish line is actually a horizontal wall. And uh, for whatever reason, when you touch a horizontal wall at a specific point, um, it allows you to pass through walls very briefly. Um, so we're going to use that to get past behind where the last checkpoint is still loaded, and it's going to count the lap. Yeah, so one of the reasons why we wanted to show this course is there's a very similar glitch in Mario Kart 64, which was actually shown at a previous GDQ. So shout outs to Mario Kart 64 and Jungle Parkway. <laughs> So one thing to point out is why we use Daisy and the Mach bike on that course. I mean, on Luigi's Circuit, I just got done saying that uh, Funky Kong had the fastest speed stat. Um, but Daisy on the Mach bike is actually able to take uh, even tighter turns than Funky on the Flame Runner. And that's really what's the most important for a DK Jungle Parkway for the last turn. So we're going to use Daisy here again. Um, and we're going to continue with the theme of horizontal walls and driving through solid walls. So after this first set of the escalators, uh, we can drive Daisy, uh, squeeze her in between these two walls here, barely hit a horizontal wall, and fly through the normally solid escalator wall. We can reach the parking lot out of bounds. And um, we're going to continuously drive to the last checkpoint of the map, hop over this wall to get a lap count, and go back around. Um, these cars also don't have solid collision, because uh, Nintendo never thought you would uh, be able to get out here. But uh, lo and behold, Glitch Hunters found out how to do this. And there you go. So the next ultra shortcut we're going to show off is on Mushroom Gorge. Uh, this task is by Esteloy and Jello Puff. Um, and it's going to use an interesting uh, physics mechanic in the game using the giant mushrooms that are present on the course. So normally when you bounce off of one of these mushrooms, Nintendo's intending for you to lack back, uh, land back on the floor or the road. Um, however, if you bounce on a mushroom and land on a wall, you're going to see uh, an interesting effect here. Yeah, so for whatever reason, uh, the wall kind of maintains the effect of the, the bounce effect of the mushroom, and you can use some very precise inputs in the air to navigate around and hit the last checkpoint to count the lap. So this Taz is Grumble Volcano. It was made by Thomas Swear and Doofenshmirtz. It's going to be on the oldest glitch on, in the game. It was found two months within the game's release. We're using Toad and Quacker here for their very high acceleration stats. Most of the Taz is just driving around this rock and counting laps. So we want to be able to slow down very quickly and then use our mushrooms in tactical spots like here and at the end. So the next track we're going to move on to is uh, Maple Tree Way. This was the first task that uh, we made at the beginning of 2019. And I think it's a really great example of the benefits of collaborative tasks, because there were six authors that worked on this, Thomas, Rocky, Swear, myself, uh, Luke, and RS. Um, so this track has an ultra shortcut. I mentioned that very briefly earlier. So the first thing we're going to try to do is get out of bounds to the side of the finish line, um, pass the finish line to get inside the first checkpoint, and we're going to try to land back on the track without passing into the second checkpoint. And we can clip up here and reach the cannon. So effectively what we've just done is we've kept the last checkpoint of the map loaded, which means we can completely cut off the tree section and just take uh, a direct path to the uh, very end of the track, and it'll actually count our lap. One of the reasons I love this course is it shows off um, a lot of the how useful wall clips can be and kind of their variability. Um, wall clips, you saw maybe on some of the early courses we use wall clips to gain a lot of height. Um, however, depending on how you hit them and the position you are when you hit them, um, it can kind of change their effect. So um, sometimes we can use them to propel over longer distances instead of gaining height. Um, as well as you're going to see coming up here, if you do a what's called a spin drift, it's going to gain us some horizontal momentum and the wall clip will maintain that. As well as clipping on this tree, it's going to help us just gain more airtime. Um, 
So on this cannon, you're going to see we also wall clip right before entering it, which means we're going to uh, have way less height coming out of it, so we can realign for this skip more, more quickly. Like I said, there were six authors that worked on this, and this was the first really great example of uh, a, a new higher standard for Mario Kart Wii tasking. Um, being able to send the time trial goes back and forth between different people to uh, more efficiently complete tracks. All right, so the next track that we're going to be showing off, we've actually been keeping this secret from the community up until now. Um, DK Summit has a glitch, and that also means that the Flower Cup is the first track to have a glitch on every single track. So this was made by Zach, Jello Puff, Luke, myself, RS, Luigi M, CF, Akari, Thomas, Marth, and Rocky, so 11 people. Um, I'd first like to reiterate the properties of rapid fire hopping. If you rapid fire hop off of a ramp, you'll get reduced air time. If you rapid fire hop in the ground, you can build up speed. If you rapid fire hop, uh, up to zippers, this can happen. You can fly straight through the wall. Um, after you land from a, a zipper trick, you can actually uh, pass through the snow patch. You have some invulnerability frames there. You could take this double cut. <laughs> yeah. And for this zipper, we want to try to be in a wheelie as long as possible, not necessarily try to gain as much height off of it. Yeah, so one of the reasons why there are 11 authors for this course is there's certain borderline pixel-perfect tricks in this game that are very hard to optimize by ourselves. We, we often have to intentionally lose milliseconds because you can end up skipping over the pixel that you need to be in. So these tricks are very hard, which is why there's lots of collaborators. And also, these borderline pixel-perfect tricks are the reason why we can't just copy our inputs every lap and save ourselves a bunch of time. Yeah, you effectively have to treat each lap as like a, a, a unique race. Um, and that's one great thing because having, you know, 11 authors for this track, this track has a lot of scenarios where we have to have pixel perfect tricks. Um, and being able to have a bunch of different people, you know, try out tossing out their own ideas to try to get these pixel perfect scenarios to happen, um, it, it allows you to get through these tracks much more efficiently. And yeah, we can uh, pull back on the analog stick here to realign for the double cut uh, after wheeling off that ramp. And that's DK Summit. There you go. It makes me so happy to finally have that track glitch. Yeah, I know. It's very, I add. very satisfying. Um, so the last track, um, suitably so, uh, for you guys is Rainbow Road. Uh, this was made by RS, myself, and Luke. So yeah, right away you're going to see um, an interesting strategy. It's comparable to super grinding in that um, you want to lose traction with the ground. So we're going to hop off kind of on the edge right here and, and ride it so that we don't have as, any traction with the ground. Build up some momentum so that when, you're, when we reach the edge of the ramp, we can completely skip that turn. As well as on this uh, figure eight section coming up, there's some interesting walls as well that you don't actually bonk into, but instead you, uh, it pushes you back. So we can abuse that by just hitting it in a certain way that'll push us forward instead. So, as you can tell, we're in a boost for most of this course, so there's not a great place to use your mushroom, except right here, because cannons drop you off at a very low speed, so we want to accelerate as fast as possible there. And then right here, we skip this chasm, and then do some rapid-fire hop low trick around the fence. And so during the second lap, I'd like to name every author that's helped work on this. Um, myself, Luke, Taz Plasma, uh, Monster, Rocky, Thomas, Swear, Jello Puff, RS, uh, Michi, Esteloy, um, Delta, Luigi M, Zach, CF, Akari, Blaze, Snoop, Doofenshmirtz, and Marth. Uh, There's a lot of people, but it really shows, you know, um, how great our community is, how many people we have in our community that have been able to uh, contribute. It's been a pleasure to wor work with all of you all over the years. Yeah. Um, in addition, I'd really like to thank uh, I'd like to thank Star and Atlas for creating the uh, the cosmetic codes that we've used here. Um, I'd really like to thank Duango for allowing us to show this off, and uh, Games Done Quick for having us. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, and we will leave you with this. This is the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut. We can collide with this wall, bounce over the fence, turn around, use the, our two remaining shrooms to just barely land on the last ramp of the track. Yeah. And time comes up in three, two, one, time. Everyone is standing behind me. This is awesome.
that's all the more of Mario Kart Wii we have for you today. Before we close this out, I do want to say a couple of quick things. Malio took the lead on organizing everything. The reason I was able to, for once, sit back and relax is because he took on all of the work of organizing everyone. He took on the effort of getting all of the commentary put together. Huge credit goes to him. I would like to, yes, indeed. Yeah, let's clap for him one more time. He did yeah! One last thing to say about the community is it is amazing. I have to say, working with these guys has been really pleasant. And something funny, Mario Kart Wii outsold Mario Kart 8 by a 5 to 1 ratio last year. This community is active. It's amazing. Feel free to get involved. And where can they do that? Uh, so you can check out Tool Assisted Speedruns for Mario Kart Wii at mkwtask.com. And for RTA, uh, where could they go for time trials? Uh, MK Leaderboards, I believe. Um, there's also some forums as well, places that they can go. There's a thriving YouTube community as well for the game. Um, a lot of the world records are posted to a YouTube channel. So all you have to do is go into YouTube, search it up, and there'll be ways to get into the community. It is huge. It is booming. And it's been 11 years, and it's still going strong. Definitely worth getting involved. Absolutely. And with that, I'm going to close this out. <laughs>